just strictly by the scale of the pit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another episode of The Link Up. What up? Hello, gentlemen. What's going on? Hello. Chilling, chilling. <coughs> How's everybody good. week? Good, man. Good. No, not Won't too complain. bad. Not too bad. Won't complain. No need oh. to. No. Always can, but no. Yeah, I don't want to hear that shit. No, oh, damn, man. I was ready to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody want to hear that shit. We don't do no complaining over here. Creed cough like, <laughs> like he inhaling from a muffler. <laughs> <laughs> he getting himself together, man. Let that man hey. get himself together. Uh, yeah, let's hold it down, bro. Let him get himself <laughs> together. He getting, he getting, he getting where he needs to be. Right. I'm on the same page. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. This episode is called "It's Okay to Not Be an Entertainer." It's okay to be a plumber. It's okay to be an electrician. It's okay to be an architect. I wish I would have brought my buddy on here that is an architect. Salute to you, Dakota. Appreciate you, my guy, out in San Diego. It is okay to subscribe to anything else but entertainment, but we seem to push our kids in that direction. One reason I know for sure is because it's the quick, quickest way to success, right? It's the quickest Supposedly. way. It's the quickest way <laughs> to potential for success. Yes, yeah. I should say that. But to to financial gain, let's just say financial gain. Right. financial for the financial. It, yeah. it deceivingly looks like it's the fastest, but it's right. actually not. The things that you just named are actually the things way that better. Do they're the fastest, especially because uh, speaking about you know the plumbers and electricians as a whole, America pushed society in this direction of everybody needs to go to a four-year university and if you don't then you're stupid so right. then a lot less people went towards being electricians and plumbers as we needed them so now they could rape us financially because it's <laughs> not as many as it should be because they they do hold, that too let's hold back on the r word <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, the I mean, I know the, we want we know what you're saying. Get it muted, but, man. Yeah. 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 No, fuck we that. Want the, we gonna we, wanna, we gonna talk we our this, shit. We want people to be able to hear it. We want people to hear this <laughs> podcast. We don't want the streaming services to suppress it. Because no, <laughs> we, we we gonna rape well, ears I put, too. I think I put it in the right context immediately, so yeah. I think we okay. Yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> and I think I part of that right is though. that they they say that that's the quickest way. Well, that's the best way. With even people being lawyers, right? But there are some plumbers that make the same money as lawyers out here oh for sure or, or more because yeah, or more. if you think about or like more. the window the window for opportunity when it comes to like make, making money for lawyers is really always contingent on a service that that may or may not put you in a good uh financial state because you might not be a partner or something like that whereas for for plumbers uh time and place is always available you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying there's people need plumbers you know yes and as a person that's a part of that community, as a person that's a part of uh, an engineer or, or a plumber or pipe fitter, bricklayer, you always have a trait. You always have a skill. You can go anywhere around the world and you can go right. anywhere and get paid, you know? Yep. And, and that's not to say that's, a, that's you can't you can't equate that for uh, for lawyers as well. But the competitive nature of those fields, again, if you're not partner, of course, you, you're restricted on what your income potential is. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of, there's a lot of lawyers who just work for the state. You know what I'm saying? And I know for mm -hmm. a fact that most, you know what I'm saying, state's attorneys and, and defenders and stuff like that don't necessarily make as much as private attorneys and, and defenders. So you got that. Mm -hmm. And it also mm -hmm. comes down to, are you a contract lawyer? You know what I'm saying? Do you yep. make contracts and stuff like that? What type of contracts are you, do you specialize in? Are you a, a family courts lawyer? All these different things kind of, kind of, there are so many areas in that that uh, need to be put into consideration as well. Absolutely. I know some people that are in the private sector that are lawyers and what they get paid an hour is ridiculous. Yep. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it don't even make no sense. Like what I make a month, they they can get that by the end of the week. Yeah. If not yep. a couple of days, shoot, depending right. yeah. on how many cases they got going Absol on. Absolutely. Time. That part too, right? Because if, if you got a couple <laughs> cases going on at the same time, you can open up a book open up the books for an hour here and an hour there and have multiple cases going on and be making money off of uh, off of different people but it's important for the young people 
the young men and women out there to know that you don't have to be an entertainer. You can always do something productive without it being, I mean, without it being an entertainer. We need more politicians. We need more physics teachers. Mm-hmm. We, need, we need more engineers. Right. Sure. I mean, you need more electricians. I mean, you're actually better off doing something like that yeah. on and top of your art. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just more. Well, yeah, true. You, I mean, you got to fund it some way. I mean, shoot, one of my biggest regrets is when I was uh, <clears throat> about to go to art school, I wish I had went to Barber College first because that's a few months and I would have been done and then had a trade, went to school, been doing that, wouldn't even yeah. have to live the typical college life. I would have pulled all the little few fine girls that was at my college. <laughs> I would have pulled all of them and be like, Carl got the money. Like, yeah, come with me. <laughs> <laughs> You might have been better off, actually. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> In hindsight, but yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Hindsight is twenty twenty. <laughs> I just started thinking about that a few years after I finished, because like one of my friends. He was a barber anyway. He just did that, and then when he was in school, he was doing it. And now, probably out of all of the people who was in my class, he's probably about the top three in success out of all of us that graduated that year for sure. I'm, and he didn't even go for his bachelor's. He stopped at his associates. He was like, "Yep, yeah, okay, I learned enough. Bye. Yeah, let me go get this paper. Killing him. Yep, killing him. Just, I get it. Just, just got a Porsche on these fools. Yeah. Also, also uh, the reason why, like, and this is go back to the earlier conversation we were having off mic in terms of like uh, the way the education system is set up. It's all kind of commercialized anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you got a lot of people who just going to school for a quick degree because they know that to get these jobs, it could be like an entry level job. Most jobs needed, they require at least a bachelor's. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And associates. So it's like a lot of these people don't necessarily have any real goals, but they want to get money. So they're not thinking about what their passions are that could kind of drive their income potential to kind of increase. They're just thinking about how can I get in there so I can get the bag. Everything is about the bag. Mm -hmm. Whatever the bag means to them, they want the bag. So they're not thinking like a a number. They're not thinking about a long-term subset of, uh, uh, of things that meet that criteria. They're thinking about all the different things they can buy. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Something that can right. change their financial state from what they know to be like their norm. And I see that I see that across the board with a lot of people. I work with I work with so many people. I'm probably the least educated person that makes more money than most of my peer group. And I work with a lot of people that I make more money than who went to school for this, this, and this, and this, and this. You know what I'm saying? And the reason being is because I I have focus on what I know my strong suit is, and I know mm-hmm. how to apply it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people didn't have that type of, uh, I guess, tutelage growing up on how to apply themselves in that way. So they just like focus on being bookworms. And there's nothing wrong with being a bookworm, but it's all about application. Yeah. What's the point in learning all these different things if you can't absolutely apply it? Because you get a degree. Mm-hmm. Just because you got a degree doesn't mean you're going to be financially stable. What's going, what that means is that, yeah, you pay, you're paying this school for maybe, how, for what, perpetuity? Right. For, for the rest of your life? for a piece of paper that that doesn't for you, for you not to work in the field that you went to school for yeah I'm and i know quite a few people like that i'm not going to say nobody's name but i've worked with some people like that that went to school for one thing and they're actually working doing something totally different from what they're what they signed up for yeah i mean should you get out of school if you do it in four years most people don't but you what you could have up to fifty thousand plus student loans Easily, people, yeah, easily. So then you paying that off, but the guy that went to you know barber, electric, plumbing school or whatever, he was done in two, and he making you know double what you making. Well, y'all could be making the same, but you sitting there still paying back student loans, right? So he's still ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's still ahead. <laughs> and then as he furthers his career in in uh, those fields, he's he gonna is, make even more. Yeah, yep. and and then if he's smart enough to use his own ingenuity, he can go, yo. Maybe I should start my own business and 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 start doing pipe fitting on the side or bricklaying on the side or get with my mm-hmm. guys and do all that. And, and you start doing foundations or tuck pointing to houses and things like that. You end up making yourself some money on the side. So it, it works out. Let me ask you a question. Um, I'm going to start with Cree. Uh, do you make how much substantially? You don't got to put a number to it. Do you make substantially more money at the age that you are now than you did 15 years ago? 
Mm, I make a decent amount more just because I make more with my freelancing now than I did when I 15 years ago. How about you, Matt? Yes. How about you, Tony? Uh, 15 like where years. Where you were 15 years ago to now? Uh, slightly. Slightly. Yeah. All right. The reason why I say that is because, and this is just like a, a litmus test. The reason why is because I think like a lot of people don't really consider like their prior experiences as being valuable. And those experiences aren't necessarily applicable to the jobs, but what it is, you know, you know what I'm saying? How you apply what you know to what your personal goals are. So uh, like with me, you know what I'm saying? I've always worked in like manufacturing and all these different jobs, but I've always sought out uh, potential to make more money with less effort. Meaning I've never, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be competitive. You know what I'm saying? I'm always going to figure out ways to kind of like uh, create solutions to problems and stuff like that, that I feel like exists that impede my progress. Whereas a lot of people always want, and I, I, I hate to say it, but like a lot of people want the easiest way out. You know what I'm saying? No, they don't want to do none of the work. That's why they, they choose entertainment. They don't want to, they, they feel like they deserve it. Whereas I don't feel like I deserve shit. I don't feel like anybody owes me anything. I'm going to get what I get based on the work that I put in. Absolutely. So at the, at the, age, like, at the age that I am right now, I know for a fact that 15 years ago, I was making less than half than what I make now. And, but for the age that I was 15 years ago, that was perfectly fine. You see what I'm saying? So what I do is I take that same information that I have now and I, I, I feed it to my kids. You know what I'm saying? I feed it to the, old, the, the young bucks around me and try to put them in the same mindset that I didn't have when I was that age. No, no, none of my OGs put me on to this way of thinking. No one. You know saying it no was just one. I'll get the money, get the bag. Get, you know what I'm saying? It was never there was no strategy to it. And I think like the best way to kind of like increase your income potential and actually because it's all about resources. The best way to increase your, your resources is to to evaluate what the situation is, be solutions based. You know what I'm saying? Solve problems and, and solve for the problem that you have. So if the problem that you have is a, a financial situation, uh, figure out, all right, what, what do I have to do to improve me so I can be a better asset to whatever situation or company that I'm a part of? You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to get what they want out of you regardless. And no matter who you work for, if you're a photographer, if you're a plumber, if you're, you know what I'm saying? They're going to get what they want out of you. So you got to get, you got to drain them for as much as they're going to drain from you. You know what I'm saying? Then you got a way to. to and part of that comes from having a conversation with others that do what you do in the same field and asking them about so earning potential. Yourself. You should surround ask about earning potential. Information. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with that type of information. You know what I'm saying? Stay in the, stay in the loop of, of people who actually, who you see, you know what I'm saying? Creating bridges to progress. And that's something, those are conversations that aren't necessarily being had, bro. No, and I think it's because some people are insecure about it or they're afraid to ask, like, yo, I'm not trying to find out how much you actually make, but, right. you know, I'm trying to better myself or get myself into a better position. But I make, I make, yeah, it, it, it's changed. It's changed a lot. Um, but that's because of me and you talk about this from time to time, Six. It's called the application of information, right? What do you know th that can help you move forward and how do you apply it? Right. And, and what are you applying it to? So. Um, I, 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 I've done that. I've done that. And I'm always, I'm not always, but I'm, there's, there are times or, or every few months where I look at the, at the, at those situations and I go, what are they making in the state of Illinois around me? Right. What are they making in the city of Chicago around me? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I try to make sure that I, I, I capitalize on it. Me in the situation I'm in right now, I, I do, I do well enough. So there's no one else that I can, I can be looking at, you know, uh, I, I'm, in a better situation than certain other people. So uh, I just take what I do know and I, I try to apply it to everything else and just move forward. I mean, it's, uh, the thing is also, it's like, um, and it's not even necessarily about being a worker bee because I'm not necessarily, I don't consider myself a worker bee, but I can mask myself. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can fit in those spaces and actually and contribute. I feel like I'm more of an independent thinker, but I have to do what I got to do to get bread so I can pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And, and then right. I can find ways to kind of uh, apply what I know to my own personal goals so I can actually achieve those, those, those goals. I have to kind of like, I have to learn the system. And that, that's always been my mentality. It's always been like, figure out what it is. I see what he's doing. That shit looks easy. I don't want to do this. How can I move in that space? <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of the times it works out, a lot of times it doesn't. 
me going to the quality team when I told you that shit, that was a that was a byproduct of me trying to figure out the simplest path to a bigger payday. And I gave it a year. I realized that the inner workings of it didn't work work for me. I wasn't a good fit for it, so I got the fuck out of there. But I know what my strong suit is, and I didn't fail at all when I was doing that job. It just wasn't. I couldn't see that as a long term solution to my problems. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people's uh, solutions to their problems is always money. My solutions to my problems has nothing to do with money, bro. Because I feel like as a man, I'm supposed to get money anyway. I'm my my job is pro, my my job is is provision and protection for anybody around me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm aware of that. When you when you're a man, your your job is to to provide secure and to and to establish foundation. You know what I'm saying? So everybody who depend on me, they look to me to try to figure out solutions to problems. I got to always keep that in mind. I'm not around there to try to, you know, figure out the quickest shortcut for the bag so I can be rich and famous. I feel like that if you if your goal is to be rich and famous, I mean you got to get dirty. Super you know? dirty. Yeah. Fast. You got to get dirty. If you there's nobody who plays professional football who doesn't understand that you got to you got to build your body up. You see what I'm saying? You got to build your body up cuz that's a that's a hard job. That ain't just a job where you just run up and down the field. You got to work out. You got to compete against other people who may or may not take your place on that team. Stuff like that. And you, you have to saying? work out harder than they do. You could, Exactly. There see, are right? no days off. Exactly. But see, that's the that's the mentality. If you if you if you operate in the, in this in this realm of thinking that you deserve something, you're always going to take the L. You know what I'm saying? You're just going to be a dreamer. But if growing you Go ahead, finish that. I was about to say, if you understand that what's if you understand what's at stake, and you understand that what you what your goals are, what your personal uh, ambition entails, you're going to be willing to do the hard work. You know what I'm saying? Because people work harder. People bust their ass as fucking as fucking waiters and waitresses and and shit like that for for crumbs because they don't have ambition, but they understand what's at stake. So just imagine if you apply that ambition to to the knowledge of what's at stake. And you put those two things together, what you can actually achieve. It's more than just, I, I made a dope song. I posted it on SoundCloud and I'm trying to go viral. No, dude, it's more, man, you don't you don't get to be Kanye West without doing <laughs> Kanye West. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? You don't get to be Jay without doing the Jay type shit. You don't get to be Drake without doing the Drake shit. A lot I mean, of networking I'm just that goes the into that. Three. I'm just naming the top three motherfuckers. I ain't even talking like, I go, I say Aesop Rock. And the reason why Aesop Rock is where he is is because consistency, bro. You know but he saying? had to build a network. You got to be places. You got yeah. yeah. You gotta work. Mm-hmm. Sacrifice. You got to not be home sometimes. You got to a lot. Gotta, you got to lose sleep. You know a lot. Saying? You got to sometimes you're just not eating. You got to you got to you're gonna be on the road or whatever the fuck that looks like, and you got to eat ramen noodles and shit like that. You got to sacrifice. A lot of people ain't ready for that, bro. A lot of people think that I just want the bag. I, they don't look at what the. Well, that's the other thing, right? They see the bag, they see the riches, they see the fame and everything, but they don't understand the, the, the actual journey to get that. The journey to get there is the most important part. Yep. Yeah, it's rough. The yeah, journey we, to get the journey to get to being successful is, is always the hardest part. I don't think some people understand that. Like no one, no one that we know that's rich or famous. There, Michael Jordan. There, there are injuries that probably plague him to this day that that will never go away. You understand what I'm saying? But it was the journey. We know him as his all time great basketball player. But the, but the journey to be Michael Jordan probably was a hell of a road, and he probably wouldn't change it for nobody. I think he said that in the documentary. I wouldn't change the way I did this for nobody, because this is the way I learned how to play the game. I'm I am Michael Jordan because this is what I did. You know what I mean? And he told them to cut the camera off. He's like, if you don't want to do it this way, don't do it this way. But this is the way I did it. And this is what made me who I am. Mike Tyson. Hmm. Kobe Bryant. Yep. yep. Ron James. You know what I'm saying? We talking people who, who who operate at the top of their level, you know, the top level of their career, the top level of their field. They, they, they are the ones that people look to as the inspiration. And not everybody, there's no room for everybody up there. You see what I'm saying? But you got to look at what, what the what the elements that made them become who they are. What those elements are, you know what I'm saying? You can't you can't take shortcuts. You can't eliminate certain ingredients to get the perfect. There game. are no shortcuts. No, there are no shortcuts. Because if you think there is a shortcut, at some point you will be raped as far as like your financial status or your intellectual property or anything like that. So people will take advantage of that because you're trying to take shortcuts. In the end, you will suffer for that. 
Growing up, did you guys have teachers that taught you any of this stuff that we're talking about? Yeah, but I had like three. Mm. Mm. No. There's uh, one toward the end of, of high school. I mean, of uh, elementary school. And even that was like surface level stuff. But yeah, I may yeah. have one library teacher that was attempting to do some stuff, but you know, she, she didn't want to get in trouble basically. So she was kind of throw out little things here and there, but still trying to stay within the status quo, I guess. Mm. Shout out to Miss Smith and Mr. Whirling, uh, Mr. Johnson, and Miss Perkins, who made sure I made a double. Mm. Yep. She said you great. she said you was too smart. She said she knew something was wrong because of the way I did my work. And she did something totally different with me. She got the okay to uh, have me take other tests to uh, make sure that I could pass. And when I took them, whoever well, click and stop that. Uh, and when I took those tests, I passed them. And they're still clicking. They're still clicking and clicking <laughs> and clicking. And it's not me. I don't, my hands I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't hear nothing. My hands up here. <laughs> okay. My uh, my seventh eighth grade teacher, uh, he was he he had this system that he kind of like my, he he measured the class's uh, individual success through a system he called ECA. It was no but extracurricular activities. So we earned extracurricular activities. And it was like uh, these tickets, they were worth something. They had like different values to them. And you know, everybody understands how money works, but he he worked it like a credit system. And so it, we learned like uh, financial literacy and how the credit system works strictly through this ECA program. And like everybody start, he, he we entered the classroom and he seated us according to where we ranked when we joined his class at the start of the school year. So like the top student, of that group would be at the top of the class way across the room. And then the, the student who probably needed the most work was sitting next to him. Yeah. And, yeah. and we would rotate seats every week, depending on where we were in ECA, meaning where we, like what our grades look like, uh, our performance, yeah. all these different things. So like, you never knew where you were gonna land when Monday came around. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I think Miss Perkins, she did that too. Like the best with the with the like just to balance it out to make sure everybody's mm -hmm. getting the right type mm -hmm. of attention because you know and when you're in this when you're in a classroom with thirty people it's hard for her to be able to teach each person so it was easy to assign a child that was on an A level with someone that was on a C or D level and get and help get them there. There were people like they had the table set up. He had the table set up and and uh and groups. Of, I think it was because it was like again thirty like you said thirty people like thirty to thirty two people in the classroom. So he had us set up in a way where they were like uh, tape uh, desks were lined up and tables. So like 10 people at a table. So it'd be uh, three different groups. So it'd be like lower class, middle class, upper class, upper class, excuse me. And then you had the one who had to pretty much, what he called jail would be sitting next to him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that would be the student who might be performing well um, scholastically but uh, they just have like behavior issues or they just might be disruptive or some stupid shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So they would sit next to him. And ever so often, like the one kid who was in our class, he was like one of the top performers, but he was just always the guy cracking all the jokes. He would always end up landing next to the teacher. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, like you would notice like certain people would always be at table one. That, that table one would like rotate amongst itself. And some people would always get out of table one. Some people would always land on table two. Some people would go from table one all the way to table three. You know what I'm saying? And then they would drop from table three all the way back to table two or table one. It was like just the, the rotation was crazy because it was all about managing. He was teaching us how to manage our ECA. He was teaching us how mm -hmm. to manage, you see what I'm saying? How to maintain and manage these things. And a lot of people picked up on it. A lot of people didn't, which kind of is a reflection of how society is. Like people, like you don't learn about credit in normal ways. Most people most people don't learn about credit till they get grown or till they get old enough to get a fucking credit card. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So those things kind of like factored in and he felt like he knew that he needed to, he kind of had, it was his responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Civil rights era, he, he fought in Vietnam, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He felt like it was his responsibility as one of the few black men teaching in his school to kind of like give us the, the game. And this was his way of giving us the game. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't see that now, you know what I'm saying? Because the school board, it's like, 
again, it go back to the whole liberal idea, like the way people think about things. We don't want to hurt feelings. We want to make sure everybody feels included. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? All that old shit, the, the, <laughs> the participation trophy shit. Nobody wants to, like nowadays, if he was still teaching, parents would have a problem with that. Mm. that question, here go yeah. another question. Uh, how many black male teachers did you guys have growing up? I, I know for a fact I had like five of them my whole fucking life. Okay. I think I might have had like, I want to say three to four. And the funny thing, I went to a bunch of different schools, but all of the male black teachers I can think of was at one school. And it was at um, Young over on the west side for whatever reason. When the Young? Yeah, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, the elementary school, uh, Ella Flat Young. It was um, like on the northwest side over near Oak Park. Okay. Yeah, I had about five. Okay, I had I had like three or four, but there was in this one school uh, when I lived in Mississippi with my dad. Yeah, no, mine were spread out between you know Shoe Smith, Lewis Worth, and Kenwood. So. Yeah. I, but I moved a lot after eighth grade. So like my my first black male teacher was on the south side at Oglesby on 76 and Green. Mm. And then uh, my second one was uh, when I went to do Sable. So I didn't have another male teacher until I was like a junior in high school, sophomore, junior in high school. Considering the fact that we all had zero to four or maybe five, don't you think we need more male black teachers in the school system? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, of course, yeah. I mean, we need uh, more males in a lot of these type of activities. All of Somebody got to do it. The, the problem is the um. Well, you got to think about it from a male perspective, and we're all men, so it's easy. But that job don't pay that much. So as a man, you're not going to look at a job that doesn't have a higher income rate in general. Like I make Especially more than a lot of teachers and I work in retail still. That's bad. Yeah. The, whole, the provision, protection, all of that stuff. Like as a man, like, especially if you got, if you family based, if you have like- Yeah, it's hard. Like I've seen some be younger and then move on to do something else. I've seen that a lot of times actually, like it will be a guy in his twenties that teaching for a couple of years. And it's like, oh, well, I'm about to get married. So now I got to get for real. Like that was a play job for a man yeah. in a way which is fucked up, but I mean, it is what it is because the money ain't right. You have to really love education, though. You got to really. That too. You got to. That too. That too, because I think it's very hard to do that job to be getting paid. Right. The ones that stay are the ones that really love it, but it's not a lot of guys who have that love, but then when you think about women it's a lot of women that's married so they can have a job that may not pay as much if they have a partner whereas the man can't have that job and then get the partner that they may necessarily want or can get one in general because it's just not enough money yeah, be a principal or so something though, moving unless up, they do that right unless their you, path is like administrative and then mm-hmm. you're not a teacher anymore so we right, right back to the same <laughs> issue but i'm gonna ask you this because matt you went you know what I'm saying you you uh, participated in community programs and stuff like that mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you, you know what i'm saying i was pretty much og big brother to a lot of young guys who used to come to the studio and stuff like that and that's a that's a i didn't ask for nothing you know what i'm saying that's a thankless job so it was never financial for me and a lot of times people who participate in those programs, those after school programs and stuff like that, those are usually volunteer programs anyway, right? But guess what? A bulk of people who, who do that job are men. You see what I'm saying? So right. it's like, so it's never like the job isn't even the issue. It's always, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's because we're going to do it. I feel like, especially if, you, if it's in you, it's, it's our job to do it. We're going to do it. So is it the system of education that 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 deters men from actually getting into those those fields? I think it might be that because I did some substitute teaching as well. All right. And mm. I was I was only asked to do that because someone said, hey, since you do a youth program, 
uh, maybe you might want to participate in doing some substitute, substitute teaching. I could get you into the school where I am, blah, 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 blah. I ended up doing it. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not too familiar with the school system. I just don't think when, again, when we talk about provisioning and providing for ourselves and being a protector for a family, most men don't look at it and go, I want to be an educator. And that's the way to provide for their family, because the ultimate thing is that that's what they're looking at the money that they can make to provide for their family. However, I still did that. I was still a part of a youth program, youth programs. I was still able to, to help out. And for me, it was never really about the money. I think it just may be the system itself in a way. I don't think a lot of people are told, hey, you should get a job as a teacher. How many kids are but you told? Never. never, but think about this though. When you think about college, now see, this is when it switches a little bit. It's a lot of males that's professors and they work in the collegiate rank and they pay more than it's right yeah. back to money again. It's always right. so going to end up about money. Money. It's always about It's provision. not that yep. males don't want to be teachers. They don't it needs to pay. Yeah. My yeah. time is worth, my time is valuable. I'm trying to have a family and provide for multiple people. I need you to break me off with some fucking money. It's 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 low. Low. Consider this though, also, we're talking like, cause uh, we're talking from K through 12, those are all state requirements. Those are state required education grades. Those are usually uh, financed. Those are, uh, those are backed by government funds. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but whereas uh, anything collegiate is elective. That's something that you choose to take on. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's corporate because the schools uh, require you to pair up with a bank to get these loans and all of these different grants and blah, blah, blah. The, the thing that I'm seeing is the fact that there are more people that are coming out of high school and foregoing college to go military and blah, blah, blah. You have a lot more situations in place where if somebody does decide to go to college, and they, they encounter the, uh, the spaces where you have male teachers and they, 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 uh, they get introduced to a different brand of, uh, uh, I guess, authority per se, because it, you think about it, a bulk of your teachers were female mm -hmm. and, and the school system was started by the church. You kind of get a situation in a place where a lot of people are not necessarily gonna, they're not gonna adhere, especially like, cause women are, or more enrolled than men. I'm not gonna say they graduated at a higher rate, but they're more enrolled than men. You have a situation in place where a lot of it comes down to appeal more than anything, where men, we, we, we learn different, bro. We just, as guys, we learn different. So we're gonna apply ourselves differently when it comes to teaching as well. Uh, men will go to the military and, and, and go into the, you know what I'm saying, start ranking up and becoming higher level ranks and they will teach that way as opposed to joining the education system. You see what I'm saying? They will become more because because we we are structured in this particular way. We like we like uh, systemic structure. We like to have something something that's a directive versus something that's uh, lectured to us. We're not going to sit there for hours on end and just listen to somebody talk to us. No, I enjoyed it, though. I will say that when I did the substitute teaching, probably because I could I could move <clears throat> as I please and I didn't have to be there all the time. I did enjoy it. Like it was it was pretty cool to. To, uh, talk to the kids and, and the, the fact their fascination with me actually giving them life game mm -hmm. over just sitting there and just giving them a daily routine of what they had to do because there was a school curriculum you know what I mean mm -hmm. I think they I think they appreciate the fact that I was able to tell them things about Egypt and Africa and Benin and Ghana and, and stuff like that so I gave them incentive you know what I mean like okay I'll teach y'all this but if y'all do that I'll give y'all some game on this right here and there was an appreciation for that. I think it's just the way the resources and the way the system is set up. Cause you know, you don't hear, you don't hear a lot of male teachers being in there and then giving them these kids some type of structure that they, they can appreciate and it'll help them build. No, I agree. I mean, the teachers that I had growing up that were men, they definitely um, were, kind of a godsend because they showed, you know, they gave us a lot of wisdom, especially growing up on the West Side, a lot of us didn't even have fathers at home. You know, they just really tried to give us a little bit more extra game than just, you know, school stuff for sure, you know, because they know that we needed it. 
Absolutely. Uh, it was one of those things for me, like when I was doing it, even with the youth program, it was always life game because you don't get life game in school. They don't teach you anything. Uh, what he was saying early, Six was saying earlier about your credit. You don't really learn credit in school until you get up to a higher level, if they teach you. you know, Barely. There's a, yeah, yeah, there's barely. a lot of things. There's a lot of things that you just don't learn. So me giving them some actual information for history and, and, and where they come from or or, or, or just tell them how to maneuver as young men and women. It was I, it was just important. It's just tutelage, you know, tutelage thing of things that when I remember back to fifth and sixth grade, did anybody tell me any of that stuff? No, 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 no. I it, nope. and I don't think another thing that they don't do is I don't think that there's a lot of positivity being pushed on on onto them, building their confidence and self esteem that they can that they can be successful. They don't have to necessarily do the jobs that people are telling them that they want to do. If someone wants to be an entrepreneur, it should be okay for them to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's the the journey, you have to work for it. And I don't think that, I think that's another thing that gets lost uh, in the sauce as well. They're not telling, they're not telling these kids that you gotta work hard for everything that you, that you want out of life. Well, I think they tell them, but if if you got to think about it, like if your examples at home, if they're not putting that work ethic in you too, you know, that that too. All on the teachers, because if you go home and your mom and your dad is out there doing flimsy, fugazi shit, and that's what your example is, then there you go. Thank you for correcting. Thank you for correcting. You know, yeah, I mean, plus you also got to think of. They see people in entertainment that lie and make it seem like, oh man, I just woke up, spit sixteen, on and now I'm here. You know, yeah, I'm just here. It's like, wait a minute, you skipped a, a gang of steps, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, they they don't they don't hear all the you know the build up. It's just like, man, I, I, was just I a man. I always wondered about that when I listened to to music, man, because everybody was moving bricks of cocaine and heroin at one point. And it was like, how come nobody rhymes about the eight balls and the ounces that it takes to get to that? No. The suffering that it takes to get to the eight ball to the to the to the brick of cocaine. I have to have to do that, man. Gucci man, man, yeah. it. Straight to the brick. <laughs> yeah, Every, man, everybody man. just moving bricks. Everybody just got bricks and it's like, push yo. Push a piece. <laughs> And I always wondered about that. Like, how did y'all get to a brick? Like, none of y'all so apes. Like, I, you know, not to, you know, dwell on that or go into that, but, you know, some of us, you know, you got to go through gotta that start. before you get to, to the other gotta, side, you know, so. Got to crawl before you walk. But yeah, I, you know. Let me ask you guys a question as providers and protectors, as men. Is your job to make sure a woman can buy eyelashes and fingernails? <laughs> And weave. Job, is, that, no. is that a is that a top priority for you guys? Never. It shouldn't never, be. never will be. Shouldn't be, you know. <laughs> I I personally would try to and have been gravitating towards women that that's not their There's deal no. typically. Yeah, not their focus, so, you know, not what they yeah. Yeah. So that. I don't have to deal with that question because they're not really interested in that. The ones that I gravitate towards typically. Creed, there are women that think that you should be paying for their hairdos and their mm -hmm. fingernails as a part of being with them. This superficiality is part of you taking them in as a wife or a woman. You didn't know that? I've, I've been hearing that. I mean... I feel like this, and just to keep it a buck, like, would the average man in the perfect world love to do all of these things? Of course he would. Of course, if that's their woman, you know, if that's who oh, they want to oh, be, uh -huh. would not know. No, 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 no. Listen, uh -huh. listen. Let a man, let him, let him talk, let him talk. Let not, him talk. not like, not like some little dip off shit, but like, yo, woman, woman, you know, like if you had the resources to do that to where it wouldn't be an issue, of course you would if you could do that. But if if they choose a man who they got a regular type situation the same as them, then, you know, you kind of know that that's going to be something that you're going to have to deal with to a degree. You know, not to, you know, sound like an asshole, but you choose what you choose. Like, if you want that type of person that you feel like going to handle all that stuff, that comes with pros and cons, too. 
So everything comes with its pros and cons. That person is going to feel like they can do whatever, even more so than the person who not putting up all of that extra stuff. So, you know, what do you want to deal with? Does anyone else want to answer? I'm out the game, man. I, I can't really. Uh... <laughs> my thing is like, my question. Becomes, you went dark on a six. Uh, my question then becomes though, like, what, what is the the baseline criteria that you enter the relationship providing? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you actually coming into the relationship? You know what I'm saying? Selling because women are selling you one thing, men are selling something else, and it's supposed to be an exchange. Women come in with these demands. You, as a man, you, you, uh, there's, there's this, uh, this thinking, and I agree with it. Like women control access to sex and reproduction, men control access to marriage and relationships. So, like, she doesn't get a relationship with the man. She can't force a man to give up his time. She can't force a man to give her a relationship. She can't force a man to marry her. She can give ultimatums, but he owns, he's the gatekeeper of that, right? So like, if you go into a, if you go into a relationship with a chick and you're, you know what I'm saying, really tricking off trying to impress her, you got to maintain that because that's what you led with. You yep. know what I'm saying? So if she's leading with her required list of things that you need to do to keep her around. You got all the game in the world to say, you know what? I'm good on that eyelashes and shit ain't my bag find somebody else you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying uh so I don't think that any man should be should ever feel pressed or required to even provide those things if he wants his woman to remain beautiful and maintain her, her her physique and stuff like that she has to put in the work to do that as well yeah what, what good is buying eyelashes if she putting on 80 90 pounds at a time <laughs> well right. that's a yeah. whole other conversation like you, to be if honest you, if you're going into this relationship trying to make sure she look beautiful and shit like that you know what I'm saying? Paying for all of this external shit and she's not actually trying to uh, she's not trying to pay her her penance for the things that you're actually providing. And it's almost like it's not even a fair trade. It's like, what do you what, you got a pet? She's your fucking pet? Or are you her pet? Well, mm -hmm. it's gotta be looked at more so like you're doing something nice because you want to do that. But my thing is going back to the whole root of it for me personally, I'm not going to be choosing somebody who's going to be buying eyelashes and all type of fuck shit with the money that I would be wanting to give them anyway, but it will be something that they like. And that is something that is a part of whatever they want to do for their beauty regimen or not, or whatever they want to do. But obviously when you get to a certain point with a person, then you want to just do nice things because you want to. Absolutely. It shouldn't be a requirement or a yeah. um you know you know like it, ultimatum it, it or something ultimatum like that type thing you should if you're doing it because you want to do it that's cool you know and if not you know maybe you got to find what is what do they call it the love languages some people's love language is not receiving gifts maybe you need to find that chick you know because yeah. that's you're the using, one that's going you're using guy brain you you're using guy brain right now you see what I'm saying? You're not thinking about it from a, a female perspective. You're thinking about it mm -hmm. logically. This mm -hmm. that you're making perfect sense to us. <laughs> but I guarantee you, saying these things to a woman, she's gonna look at you like, oh, this is a cheap nigga. Oh, this yeah. You see what I'm saying? And that's not yeah. all women, because all men aren't the same either. Right. But if we're talking about like just a logistical standpoint of like what what what's required to maintain a relationship. Again, you're the gatekeeper of who 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 gets some of your time. You get to maintain, mm -hmm. you get to allocate your time that way. You know what I'm saying? Your money, your resources, you know what I'm saying? Your resources, your time, all of that stuff. You're the gatekeeper to that. The difference is like nowadays, women have the opportunity to make their own money. Why the hell should that be your responsibility? If she if she loves eyelashes and, and lace front weaves and all this old, all this old stuff, I'm not gonna call it crazy because that's what they like. Men right. like they, we like what we like, they like what they like. If I tell her, look. To be with me, I'm gonna need a new NPC. She gonna look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> right. you know what I'm if I tell her I need new MIDI cables, you know what I'm saying, or I need new uh, RCA cables and monitors and stuff like that, she gonna look at me like I'm crazy because that stuff don't mean nothing to her. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not what? with. I'm not with her because her eyelashes are like a fucking llama. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Well, I'm with her for a different. Uh... 
But if it make, if that is that if that's what makes her feel beautiful. And she make she's got to be able to make her own money. We live in the twenty first century, right, bro. Right, Why are you right. out here asking me to provide your aesthetics? I'll help pay for some of your your hair needs or whatever, but not all of that. I'll help. Yeah. I'm, putting, I'm putting food in your stomach. You know what I'm saying? I'm providing a roof over your head. And I think they don't understand that there are essentials that when we look for women, there are essential things that we're actually looking for. And, and buying lash eyelashes that look like curtains and shit like that is not- I want the intangibles, bro. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not out here, I'm not out here just looking for a beautiful chick. I want the intangibles. I want, I want her to be able to, I want all my inconveniences to go away. I want her to be able to like, I want her to think of me so much that I don't even feel no inconveniences because that's the way I'm gonna treat her. You know what I'm saying? I want her when she come in the crib, the garbage took out. Her, you know what I'm saying? The grass is cut. She ain't finna cut the goddamn grass. She ain't right. finna shovel the snow. Right. If I'm doing all, if I'm doing the heavy lifting, why are you asking me to do do the eyelashes? <laughs> why, why, why do I need to get you a lace front? Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is my logic though. Again, I'm using right. that. But that's God logic again. True, true. So it's like yeah. all I'm asking for is intangibles in exchange for what. I'm giving. Yeah, I'm curious though. I mean, I've never heard the answer to you know why should why should a man do all that? I've seen you know what they're expected to do, but I'm like, what do you uh, offer? Like, I mean, what's the real? What do you what are you supposed to do? I don't Just know. Pretty forever? Or I, 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 <laughs> hey, don't tell them that they ain't gonna. I mean, I'm just. <laughs> Oh, don't tell them they ain't gonna be beautiful forever, bro. Yeah, keep that down. Beauty phase. I, I, I hope they people know that. That one. <laughs> no, that stays in the podcast. <laughs> hey, beauty, beauty, beauty will is, fade. Beauty is fleeting. Yes. Just like, just like your, like for us, like the thing right. that makes us valuable and the thing that make women valuable are two different things. And I don't know, like we're all individual. I don't know what you find to be valuable in the woman, Tony, or or Matt, or or Creed. But we all find something different in women that we deem to be valuable. But I guarantee fucking tea it, if they don't maintain it, those value, those valuable things start to diminish. You see what I'm saying? The reason why you've been in the relationship you've been in for so long, Tony, is because Lynette maintains that value. You see right, what I'm right. saying? We have to be valuable to one another. Mm -hmm. That's how you survive. You see what I'm saying? If you're a hunter-gatherer, if you're a farmer, if whatever, whatever role you play in the social construct, you have to maintain that, bro. Because women are hypergamous. They need, they want replacement. They want, they want whatever is whatever's depleted needs to be replaced. You see what I'm saying? If the refrigerator's empty, guess who got to fill it? If there's <laughs> something is empty, guess who got to fill it? You see what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a, it's a thing that needs to just be maintained. I'm not doing eyelashes and weaves, bro. That's not important to me. But I bought that up because I was listening. I think I sent it to you, Six. The woman was saying that, you know, if a guy can't do these things for me, then we can't be together. You should be able to get my hair done. You should be able to get my nails done. You should be that's able to fine. get my feet done. And that's fine. That's cool. Like for the guy that wants to do it, the sucker, the goofy lane, whatever it is they want to do it, or the man, whoever he is. <laughs> right. That's that's fine. Like if he enjoys doing that, if that's a part of his his protocol, his 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 his, his list on his list of things to do for yeah. a woman, if that's high on there, then he should go ahead and do that. But for men who have a, a social and, and economic responsibility and, and they have other things going on and there are other things that they are looking for in a woman, a potential mate that is very low on the list. Facts. I agree. I, agree. I, mean, I mean, and we're all, we, we come from a different generation too though, bro. That's something mm -hmm. that needs to be considered mm -hmm. from a completely different generation. I see it in like the newer generation where it's like, I talk to my sons and stuff like that. And they tell me about like the little things that women kind of like expect and they kind of like laugh it off because they they know what I taught them and the things don't don't match up. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's all about like the, it's all about, like you said, Creed, about the, the love language thing. My love language is, is quality time. You know what I'm saying? Time is important to me. You know what I'm saying? My time is valuable. I put I put time into everything that I feel like is, is necessary to me. I don't like wasting it. I don't like wasting nobody else's time. None of that because you don't get that back. You see what I'm saying? So like, and I, I, I paired up with somebody who values time as well. You see what I'm saying? So th those things matter. You can't get those, those again, intangibles. So it's not even like, we're, if we're spending time doing nothing together, we're not doing nothing together because we're spending time together. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's not about, oh, you didn't buy me a gift for my birthday or you didn't do this for my, I, 
Dude, all I asked her to do is cook me a meal for, because I was out with COVID. So I need you to provide me <laughs> dinner. She brought me dinner. Those are the intangibles. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not here to argue. I don't want to argue. I don't want to fight. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? I don't want you to be trying to shit test me to figure out whether or not I'm loyal and all of those shit. My loyalty is never to be questioned. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm, saying? I'm, I'm the man in the relationship. I gave you access to this relationship. Why the fuck you testing me? You don't own access to this relationship. You own access to sex and reproduction. You did what I'm saying? What is with that? What, what, why, why the testing? Oh, I needed you to pass this test. Anytime that's ever happened to me, I usually walk away from that. A lot of that's based on insecurity, bro. It's all on like, it's all insecurity and stuff like that. People, men shit test, women shit test. A lot of men shit test women to find out whether or not his time is being wasted. Mm-hmm. Women should test men to find out whether or not he's he loyal. loyal. He's loyal. Or women his temperance. Are, how far can I push him? Yeah. No, that, that's, that's, that's different, though, because her, her shit test for temperance is usually about whether or not he's really a man. You see what I'm saying? If a woman can push you to an emotional state, then that's a control power dynamic exchange. You see what I'm saying? So she's looking at it like, well, if he gives up his power to me, then he's not really a man. So she'll shit test you just to see how much of a man you really are. Not going to get that one. That's why like a lot of times guys don't, guys don't, they don't, they're not aware of it. I see, this go back to the conversation we were having about, uh, that's my phone, bro, my bad. A lot of guys are like, a lot of guys who grew up in households who don't have men around, who don't have a lot of male role models, who don't have father figures, big brothers, uncles, whatever, they tend to fall for those shit tests in a way where they, they fall flat on their face because they don't have the, they don't have the wherewithal to say, you know what? I'm not even, we're not doing this. I'm not going to argue with you. You know what I'm saying? My word is the first and last word. I'm the man in this relationship. I'm the head of this. You know what I'm saying? You follow my lead. The Bible say, you know what I'm saying? It's God, it's the man, and then it's the woman, and then it's the children. You see what I'm saying? I'm not submitting to her. She's supposed to submit to me. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's, that, becomes, that becomes a conflict of interest when it comes to people who feel like they... They can't, they can't, they can't juxtapose those positions. Six, that's an old logic, man. They'll tell you that you're mm-hmm. discriminating now. That's fine, exactly. though. Exactly. But that's fine, though. But at the same time, you can't have it both ways. You see what I'm saying? There are no, I can't think of too many scenarios where it play out. Awesome. I don't know too many guys who follow their woman's lead and she controls everything and he takes it. No, it does. I've never seen that I've work. I've never though, seen it. Any situation I've seen like no. that, the guy's usually a simp. I've the never, only, I've never the, seen success from it. The only thing that I've seen where it works to speak to what you just said is when you have like say, and we've encountered these women before, but I've had the opportunity to like date women like this or be close friends with women like this and see both sides of the coin. So when they have this alpha type personality in the workforce and they kind of have that type of air, the way that they life is successful on both ends, personal and professional, is when they get home, they know how to take the side, the back seat a little bit to the man that they went to it. Not a back seat, but just be like, yo, they know how to come role down. Is to be in a feminine role, yeah. and you in the masculine role, and then home. I know my role, but out there, I'm still going to have to beast on these fools because I dated girls like that to where I, yeah. the first time I've seen it, I was just like, oh, wow, you really get the 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 tight rope that it is. <laughs> yeah. and, and for us too, because when we in uh, the workplace, you have to be less aggressive in certain uh, situations that you would normally be I'm more in. aggressive because you know how it's going to be perceived in a workplace environment you know what, as a man. So it you know what that's called, man. though? Do you know what that's called? Hmm. That's called code switching. That's called conditional femininity. Men don't have that. We can't. Look, I'm going to ask you this. A woman can turn her femininity on and off. She can go from masculine to feminine. But that's not natural. That's learned behavior, right? The reason why but, I say that is this. The reason why I say that is this. All right. Imagine this. You go into a relationship with a chick and you tell her, uh, I'm only going to be masculine for the right woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah, not no. going to work. No. I mean, if think, they, about, they, think about this, think about it though. Women, but that's women don't say I'll be submissive. No, no, I'll be it. submissive and feminine for the right man. Women say that all the time, bro. 
if you ask a woman, and again, Tony's out the game, you know what I'm saying? But if you enter, if you if you go enter a, a situation with a female and y'all just talking, y'all really getting to know each other, and you started noticing certain things about her character and her behavior, like she's being aggressive with you. She's been again, I, I'll use my son as an example, and I'll just touch on it briefly. When she shit tested him, she went into her masculine. You see what I'm saying? She has no she has no need to turn that off now because she knows that she gets the response and reaction she wants from him from this from this, these actions moving forward. Is it right? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? Definitely not. Uh, it's not traditional. And we, we live in modern times. So traditionalism isn't necessarily, you know, what I'm saying widely accepted anymore. But when you talk about uh, code switching, you don't code switching only gets you so far. I don't code switch at work. I'm me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like I, I speak proper English. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to pretend to be something I'm not. I need them to see me as I am so I can get the full respect I deserve. I don't want I don't want the I don't want the code switched will or the code switched six to get a certain amount of respect that the other will doesn't receive from the same people. I need them to see me as I am. Women don't necessarily they 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 feel like they're, they need to put on their interpretation of what they see respect in men. You know what I'm saying? They want to get that that they see. And they, they, they traditionally taught each other from one generation to the next that this is the way you succeed in this world. It's this just a slippery goes. slope when it comes to a workplace because, like, it's you, you have to have, a, like, everybody evenly have to have a certain level of, like, non-emotionalness and just a professionalism. So it's like, in that world, they got to move in a less feminine way because part of being feminine is having more of an emotional response to certain things. That's the only reason why I said that when you go home, it's going to be a different energy and it should be that because it can't work you being the way that you are in a workplace environment at home. That's not going to work. And the same for a guy. And same for a guy, because even though you say like the coach, like you can't be the pure masculine the way you are with your homies at work. You can't be that. You no. know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I mean. Like, you got to tone certain shit down. I'm going to tell you this, though. No, I, 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 my pushback to that is this, though, bro. And I agree with what you're saying. But my only pushback to that is this, though. Like, for men, though, the reason why we we tone it down we never turn it off we no. never turn it off no it's not That's what off, I'm saying. Off. we turn we tone it down only because we understand the environment and the outcomes you know what i'm saying so like with women again they're doing their interpretation they're doing their version of what they see men do they're not doing what we do they're doing what they see and what how they envision the outcome to be so mm -hmm. uh like when women like we we don't we don't respect them any more or less when we know they're code switching. We just know they're code switching. You see what I'm saying? They in their in their in, when they're operating in these spaces, they do what they feel like is necessary. But nobody outside of other women tell them that they need to do that. We're not telling them, hey, before you, I guarantee you, there's no male professor in no college saying, all right. But also, when you get out here in these spaces, you need to be more masculine. You need to start. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody telling them, hey. The uh, only way you're going to be taken more seriously in these spaces is if you act more like a man, because then you could throw these men off. They'll be off. They'll be off. They, they pivot. And then they, they, they're going to respect you more. Now, they're if, if, you're not, if you're not respectable, you're not respectable. But they're basing it on they don't, that's they're basing it on the perception of what they've already seen, though. Like if you go into a situation and you see a girl acting super feminine and extra nice and how guys act towards them like she a little pella oh okay like they don't want that reaction that's why they're going against that energy that's what they're basing it on how we go, respond to it see they go extreme though that's all i'm yeah, saying I, I, now that i don't disagree so, with but definitely so there's like a middle ground the same way we tone it down you see what I'm saying? We tone mm -hmm. down our hyper masculinity to kind of mm -hmm. become more neutral so we can, because it's yeah. all, way, you know how like, uh, and I, I don't like to use animals as an example, but you ever notice like uh, when the dog meets a new dog, he usually put his head down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially when he knows that the other dog is the alpha. He knows mm -hmm. he can smell it. He can pick up on it. Guys understand who the boss in the room is. He might know he can take him, 
but he respects the position. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that being said, like um, what what for for us on a on a human scale, it's about who's the most informed, who can execute, who can actually deliver on the threat. You see what I'm saying? If I, if you and I are in a, in, in a position where we're arguing, there's certain words we're not going to use. There's certain things that's not going to be said because we don't want to escalate it to violence. We know that things can go violent quick between us. You see what I'm saying? Well, even in the office mm-hmm. setting, the reason why work is a neutral is a neutral battleground is no. It's not because it's been discussed. Nobody said, "Hey, we're not going to fight at work." No, we know it's, that, yeah. it's because I know I'm there to do my job and go home. Exactly. We I know don't want no confrontation here. We know what's at stake because I know I know what happens when they. I know what I can do. Yep. I know my capability. I'm afraid that I might fuck you up. The West Side is ten minutes away. Or you might fuck me up. The West Side is ten minutes away. Seven if I got an emergency. And we don't want to find we we don't want it to go there because that's not the that's not the focus. So when I say that when I say that they go to the extreme, the extreme of masculinity would be like them doing their. I would say like um, you know how like uh. Damn, this is gonna be real controversial. You know how like gay dudes uh, come off as black women? Yeah. yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, a lot of saying, gay yeah. dudes have, a, like a lot of effeminate gay dudes sound, if you close your eyes and listen to them talk, they sound like black chicks. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's the code switching shit, man. It's like they pick, they pick a, a, they pick a, a character. So they portray a character to, to deliver. When a woman code switches into her masculine role, she goes into who she perceives to be the most threatening man and portrays him in that act. You see what I'm saying? So she might come off as being uh, uh, Don Draper from, uh, what's the name of that fucking TV show? Mad Man. Man. You did what I'm saying? She's doing her portrayal of what a a respected man is when she enters these these spaces. She might be uh, uh, who met the man is on uh, Ghost. Or whatever, you know, on ghost. You know what I'm saying? It might be that kind of cocky guy. But when she gets home and she's around her man who's more masculine than her, he's the alpha in the household. She's gonna, of course, she's gonna be more submissive unless he's a punk to her. You see what I'm saying? Unless she feels like she can walk all over him. It's just one of those things, bro. Like, but again, that's that's something we can't turn on and off. If if I were to turn it off, I wouldn't even feel right. I I am who I am. Yeah. See what I'm saying? I can tone. I, I'll tone it down. It's a tone down. I, I turn it so down. Off. I turn it down. Like when I go to work, I turn it down. When I'm having conversation with people I I don't know, I turn it down. Like I, I don't necessarily turn it off. When I'm at like again, when I'm at work, no off. there is no off unless I'm no, sleeping. no. That's it. <laughs> that's it. And you can still get shot in my dream. <laughs> on, on everything, bro. On everything, bro. Because, I mean... Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> see, right. Again, this is the byproduct of a world that men created. We created a dynamic where women feel like they have to be that. And it's not fair to them. No. Because, because if you think about it from this angle, though, man, like... And I, I learned this just watching my mom. And I think we had this conversation, too, Matt. I, I, watched, I watched my mom take care of me and my brother and all the stuff that she had to go through with uh, being a the the soul income and stuff like that and me and my brother before we even started hustling so i'm kind of like watching and i'm like seeing her be a woman i've never seen her be so she got into her masculine frame you know what i'm saying and doing what who i saw her be is a version of my dad she was like doing her interpretation of my dad you see what i'm saying i don't even think it was a i don't think it was a conscious decision i don't think she slept on it and gave it some thought and then wrote down some notes no she's just boom turned on the switch her masculinity, her masculinity kicked in when her femininity turned off. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And it's just one of those things. Women, my mom didn't want to work all those goddamn hours. No, my, my dad, mine didn't either. My but dad, the my only dad thing that happened, all those hours. The only thing that, di- that didn't happen because our situations is different was there wasn't a man around. Like your dad was around, mine wasn't. So I, my, I intuitively tried to pick up and do things a different way because I wanted to be around men. So I hung out with certain guys. Right. I was around certain guys, not just necessarily in the church, but but the guys that was on the corner and things like that. So I, I did things differently to kind of understand what it is a man, the role a man was supposed to play. Right. And, but you got some guys who are raised by their mom. They get was it uh they mask they get emasculated by their mom and, and they don't know how to act. Right. They don't know they don't know the proper role. It's it's it's, it's interesting. That's all. Man. It's just one of those things where like uh because I got a daughter, I had these conversations with her and uh, I watch how she interacts with her brothers and she, she'll be 18 this year. 
And I'm up here like having these conversations, like trying to get her to, she can't see it from my angle. You know what I'm saying? She growing up in this, in this system. It, it, it's, it's almost like it's, it's in the water, bro. It's like all, all American women, all Western women kind of have it where that, that masculinity is like, it's got to be part of the aesthetic. It's got to be part of the, the crazy part is if a man went full masculine on them, they, you know, they can't deal with it. Yeah, man. No, that's what they call toxic, bro. That's, toxic, that's why that's yeah. like they, they, they literally like it's almost like uh, it's like because it's so rare to see it now because mm. we've tamed, we've tamed ourselves. We've tapered it back a little bit. We've kind of like created, we've created so much comfort and so much convenience in the world where we let people just do them. But sometimes we gotta, you know, like when my dad come home, he gotta, you know what I'm saying, crack the whip. Hey, why these dishes ain't done? Shit like that. That's how we move in this world. So they hear us bark and they're like, oh, that's toxic. I'm scared of that nigga. I'm scared of this motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? Because they're not used to it. We're not around no more, bro. We're here in the world. We're not, we're not, we don't control. Showing it. Used to. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? They get to, we we let them just fucking, we let them go on autopilot. We let the whole system go on autopilot as men. On some Tom and Jerry shit. Like when we out, right. when we ain't home, it's a fucking, it's a fuck show. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> and that's, and that's the whole world around us, bro. The whole world around us is like that. Especially not within our community. You know what I mean? Like oh, it's, exactly. it's, it's, it's backwards out here. It's backwards that's, out here. That's why they can't, that's why they can't identify with us being masculine. They just, they automatically just call it, that's gotta be bad because I don't like the way it makes me feel. We don't operate on our feelings like that. We've never, we never have. We use our feelings to help us, to help guide us through certain situations, but we use our logic to help discern outcomes. It's facts over feelings, logic over emotions for some of us. Uh, we don't, we don't, we don't move like but, that. We doing the things kinda, that make sense. You kind of, because you know how like evolution works, like uh, evolute, like giraffes didn't evolve to have long necks just because they needed to reach the trees. It was some that had long necks that had sex with those who had long necks and had a baby that had a longer neck. And then that one bred with another one that had a long neck. So the ones who didn't have a long neck ended up dying off because they couldn't reach the fucking trees. You see what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. We're in a situation now where it's like a lot of men aren't in the households anymore. So you have a lot of these effeminate men who don't necessarily have the masculinity necessary to kind of lead, to be real leaders. Or the lead, I won't say real leaders, but just the leaders that they need to be. So you have a lot of guys out here who are just who are portraying the image of what they think their moms or their sisters or their aunties want in a man because they were raised by their moms and their aunties and their sisters to be this particular type of man. So if it's a if you're going to be a man who get the bag, who who wear the Gucci belt and uh fuck these hoes, I don't, I don't trust these bitches because a lot of single moms teach their sons not to trust these bitches. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> A lot of them teach them to be simps too, and you gotta yeah, get that exactly, out there. Yeah, exactly, out exactly. That, that ain't the move either. But the a few years in the dating world, you learn that ain't the move unless you are truly and utterly a simp, and that's what you, gotta, you want to do. You gotta be in the presence of other guys who kind of got more information. A lot of dudes like move in circles. It's like it's a because. Humans are pack animals, bro. Like mm -hmm. we pack animals, bro. We just we we all kind of kind we social, so we pack animals. So like the the ones who have uh, a similar way of thinking, they all kind of gravitate towards each other and form echo chambers. And that information starts to kind of like just circulate. And all these motherfuckers who got the wrong information kind of start believing that they're right because it's only right in that little world that they exist in. Yep. You know saying like us having this conversation here is dope because. I guarantee you, we're not having these same conversations in 90 other places. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, so therefore, there's no echo chamber here. There's just ideas being exchanged. Every, I know for a fact, out of four niggas on this fucking stream, I'm the one who think like I think. You see what I'm saying? But I don't mind sharing what I know and how I feel. And then I'm listening to you, Creed. I'm listening to you, man. I'm listening to you, Tony, so I can get some, so I can have a, a perspective on things. A lot of people don't have that because they're taught in their echo chambers that everybody else is wrong and it's toxic to not think the way they think. But that's toxic. Yeah. Right. Or, or, or it's not even toxic at all, bro. It's just perspectives. It's just different ideas. Or it could and just be wrong. Yeah. Right or wrong. Again, me disagreeing with either any of you, it's not, that there's nothing wrong with that. That just means that I have an opinion. We should all have an opinion. Cause if you don't, 
You know, what you do know. you have to stand? What do you have to stand on? Yeah, right, exactly. All right, I think we are motherfucking. Uh, God damn it, uh, done here. God damn it. <laughs> word, word, word. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to the link up with my guest six oh six, Kareed and Agent Smith seven eight. Remember the mission statement when you're striving for greatness. God never puts you in the driver's seat if it's taken. You bitch you. <laughs>